Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. I want to talk about asthma, which is an increasingly common condition characterized by chronic inflammation of the airways, obstruction of the airways, bronchial hypersensitivity, and inflammation. Um, the symptoms include recurrent wheezing, breathlessness, tightening of the chest, coughing. It's really frightening and it can be so severe in children and adults that they can't engage in everyday normal activities, including exercise. Exercise-induced asthma attacks can be so frightening that even with an inhaler on hand, some people are pretty terrified to engage in it. Um, while asthma is in part caused by diet, and I'll come back to that in a few minutes here, dietary changes like eliminating dairy, drinking more water, adding more salt to the diet can help. A new study shows that exercise, the thing that some uh, patients fear most when they have asthma, can actually be part of what uh, can be used to lower inflammation and improve breathing, aerobic exercise specifically. Since inflammation accompanies asthma and exercise has been shown to have an anti-inflammatory effect, the researchers wanted to see if aerobic training would have a positive effect on bronchial hyper-responsiveness and inflammatory cytokines. And then while they were at it, they also evaluated asthma quality of life and airway inflammation. The subjects included 58 people with moderate to severe asthma who were randomly assigned to either do just 30 minutes of yoga style breathing two times a week, and that was the control group. The intervention group did the yoga breathing, but also did treadmill exercise of 35 minutes two times a week. The patients were provided with a four-hour educational program, and then they completed their exercise sessions supervised by an exercise physiologist. Bronchial hyperresponsiveness, serum cytokine levels, that means inflammation, quality of life, fractional exhaled nitric oxide tested before and after. All patients remained on medication, 43 of them actually finished the study. Now, after only 12 weeks, subjects in the group assigned to both the breathing and treadmill exercise had greater reduction in the severity of asthma symptoms than those in the control group. They also had more improved quality of life, reduced serum cytokine levels. That means their inflammation were levels, levels were dropping as a result of the exercise. And interestingly enough, the, the uh, patients who um, had higher inflammation and worse asthma control fared the best. They showed the most improvement. So the worse off you are, the better the exercise is for you. Uh, by the way, this is the first randomized trial that looked at the effect of aerobic exercise and reducing both symptoms and inflammation levels. The authors concluded that aerobic exercise should be used as an adjuvant treatment to pharmacological intervention for asthma patients, and in fact in this study it did work. But uh, I have a better option, and that is to, um, yes, do the exercise, but let's increase it because two times a week is not enough, um, and then add to that an optimal diet with the objective of lowering medication, or in some cases, eliminating it. Uh, there aren't any studies, and, and we see this frequently, people always would like to see uh, studies on every disease, like what Dr. Esselstyn did with heart disease. I mean, wouldn't that be a sweet world if the research journals were filled with those kind of interventions? And you don't see that. But what you do see if you start looking around is the medical journals have tons of articles on the effects of exercise on asthma and eliminating dairy on asthma and improving hydration on asthma. Well, if you put all that stuff together, you get a better effect. That's what we did here to create our inflammatory bowel disease protocol, is taking all these individual little data points and saying, well, my gosh, if all those things can have a positive effect, why don't we just do all of them for these people and see what happens? You know what happens? They get remarkably better when you do all the stuff that makes a positive difference. Um, the other thing is that there, and testimonials aren't a, sub, a substitute for research. Let me put that out there right away. But, but there are a lot of people, including members of Wellness Forum Health, who have been um, who have said for years, you know, since I started eating this diet and I trimmed down and I, you know, exercise that sort of thing, I haven't had to use an inhaler for years and years and years. So um, I always think diet, exercise, the best thing. No negative side effects. The side effects of hanging out with us, by the way, you're going to lose weight, feel better, your skin will look better, you're going to have more athleticism, sleep better at night. I mean, those are side effects people generally can tolerate, in my experience. I like them, all right? So, if you're asthmatic, change your diet and exercise. Good combination. All right, according to a recent study, American children and teens don't consume enough water. 
newsflash, right? What are they busy consuming? They're consuming soft drinks and sports drinks and flavored milk and just about everything else. Um, but actually, the, the data in this study, um, uh, and by the way, that dehydration status affects both their mental and physical function, according to the study I'm going to talk about. Uh, but the, these researchers analyzed data of over 4,000 kids, and they found that not only were they not drinking enough water, they weren't drinking enough of anything. All right, so so the kids were so dehydrated they weren't even taking in enough of the bad stuff to uh, to make a difference. So half of the kids weren't taking up in enough fluids of any type. Dehydration 76% higher in boys than girls. I guess we girls are much better at the drinking water. 34% higher in blacks than whites, and 25% of kids said I don't drink any water at all. Now that's concerning. So this is bad news. A lot of kids dehydrated. I'll tell you what I think the good news is. I think this is an easier problem to solve than almost anything else in the diet and health related field with kids because there actually isn't much um, controversy about it and it doesn't have to be very expensive and I think we could start at school. So here are my suggestions. I think all kids should get a water bottle at school and be encouraged to drink water at school. Now I know I don't like advertising in schools, but if budgets are so darn tight we can't find a dollar per kid, I'm sure sponsors could be found. I mean, I would sponsor water bottles in local schools here if I were asked to do it. Second, kids should be able to drink water during the school day and to use the bathroom during the school day. I am astounded at the number of parents who are members here at Wellness Warm Health who tell me that their kids aren't allowed to drink water and aren't allowed to go to the bathroom. Now I can think, except it's very specific times like recess and lunch, and I can think of a lot of reasons not to have kids you know, wander around the hallways, but keeping them from going to the bathroom? Are you kidding me? We really think that that's great for public health. Third, water could be served with meals at school. Now, in a perfect world, that would replace dairy. We don't live in a perfect world. The milk producer is not going to let that happen anytime soon. But if you just put it there as an also, you know, I think kids would drink it. Fourth, water could replace, and this has been done in some schools, by the way, could replace milk and, uh, you know, caloric beverages in vending machines. We all know schools are kind of addicted to the income from vending machines, and we can't take that away, but there is no rule that says that the income has to come from Gatorade and, you know, sports drinks and all that sort of thing. Fourth, our fifth, uh, last but not least, and fifth, coaches can encourage kids to drink more water and require water bottles at practice. Now, a lot of coaches push protein drinks and sports drinks and all that kind of stuff, but I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of coaches that are going to actually argue the point that their athletes shouldn't drink more water and that it would help them perform better. Now, what I think would happen is if you got kids focused on water at school, they would do it at home too because an interesting time thing happens when you start drinking enough water. When you stop drinking water, you feel real thirsty real fast. So I think these kids would do better at home. And the good thing about focusing on water drinking is, again, like I said before, it just doesn't generate much controversy. Who really is going to argue with me? I mean, I get a lot of people who write me hate mail about a lot of things, but I really can't fathom that there's anybody out there who's going to take the time to write a letter to me and say, why are you focusing on kids drinking water? You know, you're, it's the wrong thing to do. We can come to agreement on this, and maybe that might be the start of getting something done positive for kids, you know. All right, that's all for today. Actually, all for the week. So have a great one. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you next week on Tuesday with more news.